Raj and Charm City B. This is the recap of the Baltimore Ravens kicking the shit out of the Seahawks 30 to 16. We're going to talk about it. Stick around. Giggity, 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 giggity. So, yes, joined for by another week of holding here on the table. Um, wow. We beat the Seahawks. The Ravens beat the Seahawks, man. Yeah, I didn't see it coming, but I'm quite happy about it as a Rams fan, personally. But. Well, it's not even that I didn't see it coming. It's that I didn't see it being such a wide gap. <laughs> like, I literally thought this game was going to come down to a Justin Tucker field goal, honestly. So the fact that it ended 30-16, to 16, icy on the cake. We beat a Super Bowl contender. Here we are. We also be one of your guys. But we're going to open up the show and talk about one of your old guys, Marcus Peter. Marcus Peters, who made his debut with a pick six, and which was probably more of a turning point in that game, honestly. The game had been kind of lackluster, kind of, you know, very slow, and then Marcus Peters took that interception to the house. Welcome to Baltimore. I mean, I think that trade paid off. <laughs> so it's kind of funny how the Lit Tube comes full circle here, because if you remember in our first ever Lit Sports Online episode, I had Marcus Peters as a player to watch. Really? He focused on. Oh, my God. When he, back when he was on the Chiefs. And now he went to That's the Rams. Deep. He went to the Ravens. And now he makes this wow. huge play in his first ever game as a Raven. That's – wow, that's crazy. We're going to have – that's insane. There's got to be a way we got to roll that. I got to hear that. This is not only the first episode of Lit Sports Online. This is also our NFL kickoff. And we have a lot of information to cover, so we're going to get to it with Holden's Players to Watch. In this segment, I basically want to talk about NFL players that are in unique situations, whether it be coming off an injury or we're not sure how they're going to produce this year. Or maybe they had a really good campaign last year and we're talking about are they going to follow it up with another strong campaign. So let me start with Marcus Peters of the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a cornerback and he's a player to watch. And he, last year he was a standout rookie. He had a league-leading 26 pass defenses, also had 60 tackles, 8 interceptions, and 2 defensive touchdowns. Now, for Bar Marcus Peters, that is very solid statistics to put together in your rookie campaign. Even for a normal star experienced starter, that's a good campaign. So I think in year two, he's going to go ahead and raise that up to an elite level of play, establishing himself in that elite tier of corners along with Josh Norman, Richard Sherman, Darrell Revis, and others. Uh, he's going to be a household name after this year. So, yeah, I mean, who would have thought it all the way? What was that, three years ago? Jesus. I mean, that, that was a pretty fantastic play. And, I mean, you know what? Let the video do the work. Another video. Mario Rowley. Five. That's going to be crazy. Four, <laughs> three. Two. Hi, Matt. One. I mean, again probably one of the better trades I've seen, especially when, if you're in our fantasy football league, you just see a bunch of shitty trades. But that was just a great, awesome, paid-off trade. I don't know how Kenny Young's going to pay off for you guys, but, I mean, you guys think of Jalen Ramsey, so... He's been working out so yeah. far. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was definitely a turning point in the game for sure. And I think, overall, it was a game where the Ravens really just, if you think about it, the points differential really came down to the defensive points. Yeah, I mean, it was those 14 points. And, I mean, Marlon Humphrey, too, also had a, um, I mean, he kind of sealed the game up with that fumble recovery for a touchdown. But on the offense, um, very surprised that, you know, virtually the passing um, game was not effective. And it's not so much Lamar Jackson's fault as you may see some people on the internet saying, but it was a lot of drops. I think there was a total of six drops. And, I mean, Lamar Jackson ended up finishing the game off of 143 passing yards for 40, at a 45% passing completion. And you think, you know, if six of those drops had been caught, you know, what would his completion have been like then? Or Mark Andrews, how many yards – you know, Mark Andrews dropped the ball more times than I can count, and hopefully they clean that up. And with Hollywood Brown potentially coming back after the bye, we'll see how that adds to the passing game. But, I mean, Lamar Jackson single-handedly, in my opinion, took that game over. I mean, he had 14 rushing attempts, 116 rushing yards, and just this balling-ass touchdown on fourth and two. I mean, there's really no way to explain it. And for sake of another video, here you go. This is like... 
the most badass play ever. Jackson, first down, touchdown. Eight yard touchdown run by Lamar Jackson on fourth and two. I mean, you literally told your coach, no, I got it. Let's go. Let's go. And you know more, you know, John Harbaugh is already an aggressive enough coach. We've seen what he will do on fourth down. But the fact Lamar Jackson like went in there and it wasn't even like, you know, like a running, you know, running play to the outside. No, they ran quarterback power, which is virtually like saying, fuck that shit. I'm the fullback running up the middle. Like what? Well, and this <laughs> is what I've been so uh uh impressed slash surprised by with like Lamar Jackson and the Ravens like because yes he has this ability to just like take over the game with his legs you would think by now he may have got dinged up a little mm-hmm. bit he's had a lot of he's shown a lot of durability to be able to do this consistently week in and week out for such a long time yeah. it's like over a, like a basically like a full season almost he's been doing this now yeah and I think it goes to show how much work he put in the offseason I mean he definitely put on some weight. He definitely beefed up a little bit to be able to absorb some of them hits. I don't think he's took in that serious of a hit in quite a few games, but that's also a credit to how he plays. He'll run out of bounds. He'll get down if he needs to. Yes, he's going to make someone look ugly on camera every week. I think if you look at the history of our thumbnails for CCB this season, it's been just a different Lamar Jackson like highlight, the stiff arm to – um Oh, what's his name? Uh, to Watt from the Steelers. You know, how many times that one, even in the preseason game against the Green Bay Packers, just like looked like a video game character out there. And we've seen it week in and week out. So I think he's taking care of himself. And of course, you everybody does get scared about that big hit. Is it going to come? Is he going to get injured? But here's the thing. Yeah, Mason Rudolph, who probably plays the most vanilla offense in the NFL, virtually almost die on live TV. So... It doesn't matter what style of quarterback you play or what type of what style of any position you play in the NFL, you're probably gonna get injured. That's a risk you take. Well, the Ravens have also come full circle with their offense from you think back back to the times of Kyle Bowler, how mm-hmm. vanilla that offense yeah. looked. And now it's like dynamic because you got a mobile quarterback, you got some playmakers, mm-hmm. and it's looking a lot different for the Ravens now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's actually quite funny, actually. You know, I remember um you know, just looking at some of the stats and comparing, like, what is Lamar Jackson? Virtually played a whole season at this point. He's played about 16 games, I would say, now. And it's like day and night in a difference of that Ravens team. I, we we got we saw what happened with the first season with Flacco. It's like it was semi-hopeful that first game or two, and then it just fell off. And then Lamar Jackson came in, and something happened, and it's still happening where teams cannot defend him. And it helps that he's easily probably one of the more athletic and fastest players on the field anytime he steps on the field. But it just goes to show you that people were saying, well, this dog and pony show is going to eventually get old. No, it's still going. And now we're starting to see. We kept up with the Chiefs, who arguably probably a Super Bowl contender whenever Pat Mahomes comes back, if they can manage to win a few more games without him. But, you know, we beat the Seahawks in Seattle. That's a Super Bowl contender. And now we turn our attention to the New England Patriots, who arguably have probably the best chance of getting to the Super Bowl statistically. Look at their schedule, you know. And they just got Mohamed Sanu. So who knows what's going to happen Sunday night when, you know, two weeks from now when they come here. But I think there's a chance we could beat them. Well, yeah, I mean, the Patriots have a hell of a defense this year. I mean, I expected their defense to be better, but I wasn't expecting, like, top defense in the no, league. I don't think yeah. anyone's really seeing that. But Big shout out to Kyle Van Noy. <laughs> they can just ride that defense. Like they, you know, Tom Brady, yeah, mm-hmm. he's old, but like Bill Belichick still got their system in place mm-hmm. and they got this monster ass defense. They're yeah. gonna be tough to beat. Yeah, they're gonna be a very tough team to beat. And you've <clears throat> gotta know that Bill Belichick has been watching the shit out of film on Lamar Jackson. I mean I hate to say it because, you know, let's play double advocate. Someone's got to contain this. Eventually, some team is going to contain this. And I am curious to see what happens when that happens and how they bounce back from that. I hope it doesn't happen in the Patriots because I hope we destroy them. But I think you'll probably see a lot of quarterback spies and defensive end Definitely. teams. But it's the question of can the Ravens offense 
get around that and yeah. do other things. Well, I do predict that there may be a lot more passing in this um, in this game. And uh, we're going to talk a lot more about this next week. I don't want to spend too much time on the New England game, but we're going to preview it next week. But I think for the Ravens to have a chance to win this game, which is after we saw what happened last week, after, you know, the bye week and getting people healthy and plugging some more things into the offense, it's going to be a close game, but the page, the Ravens are going to have to win it through the air, in my opinion. I don't think the run lanes are going to be there for Lamar Jackson as much as it's been in weeks past because of just how insane the New England Patriots defense has been. But, I mean, Sunday night football, Baltimore, Maryland, Ed Reed is being inducted into, I think, the, yeah, he's being inducted that night. So, there's a lot going on in that game. So, hey, I'm going to be there. I'm excited to see what happens, so I don't know. Yeah, should be interesting. But without further ado, before I give the game ball, big shout out to the Washington Nationals in making it to the World Series. Um, they won game one. I'm not sure. It, well, we're filming right now. Game two is played right now. So we don't have stats for that, but we'll definitely have it on our page. But the game ball this week is actually a twofer. One goes to Marcus Peters. Welcome to Baltimore, and the other one goes to Lamar Jackson, who, again, has just really helped this Ravens def um, offense really just, I mean, transcend. Here we are. So, game ball to you. Good catch, Mario. <laughs> so, yeah, that does it for our show. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Justin, great to have you on the table as always. Look out for more UFC videos with Pat, and, yeah, take care.